In today's video, we're gonna tour Rachel's fully renovated 2007 Keystone Mountaineer. I'm Rachel. I am 38 years old. I grew up originally in Western Kentucky and I full time in my 2007 Keystone Mountaineer. You may have seen the inside. It was renovated by a really good friend of mine, Renee from Wisco Flip. It was featured in Rootless Living Magazine in the September, October issue. I purchased it from her back in June and knew that this was the place I wanted to live. Unfortunately, the outside hadn't been renovated. So that's a project that I took on a lot harder project than I thought it was going to be. Originally, it had all the original stickers or what was left of them and the adhesive. Luckily, my brother-in-law, my sister, and my nieces, Chris, Tara, Amy, Micah, all helped me this summer, and we really did a lot of work to this thing. So we stripped all the stickers, we cleaned all the residue, and took out all the old caulking all over the whole RV, and then we painted everything. Just simple, nice, and bright, and clean. I kind of wanted it to look like a house. Went around and re-caulked everything after that. So after days on ladders and tons of caulking, we finally got this whole thing resealed, when you know how important that is in an RV. Don't want water getting in. But now I finally feel like it looks really cute and kind of lives up to what the inside looks like, which is absolutely gorgeous. One of the reasons I love the fifth wheel is it does have a lot of storage and I was transitioning from a house and I knew I couldn't give up everything just yet. And so now let's go check out the inside of the RV, which is my favorite part. So welcome to my kitchen. Um, it's definitely my favorite room in the whole RV because I love to cook. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't renovate the RV myself, but my friends at Wisco Flip did an amazing job. I couldn't have picked better furnishings or better paint colors or anything. They have everything exactly the way I wanted it. So for me, it all starts in the morning with the espresso machine. Have to have that to get started. My propane stove, which is awesome. I can cook anything on it, even my regular pots and pans that I brought from home. One of the things that I absolutely do adore is this deep farmhouse sink. There's tons of room for dishes and prep work in here. And then you have a Dometic fridge. Now, I was super excited because it's not as small as some RV fridges and which wasn't gonna work for me because I love to cook. Not as big as home, but it's the perfect size really for me traveling by myself. So that works out great for me. And this is like one of my favorite spots too. I sit here and work. The table can be turned sideways if I have guests. We can fit on both sides or I usually leave it this way to work. I sit here and work, I sit here and eat and just take in the view wherever I'm at and watch my neighbors. <laughs> so let's take a look at the living room. Welcome to my living room. This is my cozy little space I love to hang out in. As you can see, I have this awesome little sectional sofa behind me. One of the things I love about it though is it does fold out into a full size bed. I have a 19 year old daughter that's away at college. So when she comes for mom to cook dinner, she can crash on this afterwards and I can have guests stay here too. Um, my absolute favorite thing in the living room is this fireplace. I mean, how many RVs do you see that has a fireplace? I mean, it's beautiful, but it also puts out heat. So to sit in here at night on the couch with my feet up in a book and the fireplace, the ambiance is just amazing and I adore it. Another feature of this RV that I absolutely love that definitely gives it that farmhouse vibe that is just so awesome are the faux beams on the ceiling. I mean, obviously they're not real. It's an RV, we can't tell that much weight, but they're so gorgeous and they just give it such a comfy, cozy feeling, especially at night. Um, over here is just an awesome little space. I have another chair for guests so we can conversate. And then I have a ton of storage under here, you know. I have so much storage for shoes, it's ridiculous. These are pretty much all full of shoes, let's just be honest. <laughs> So all that, all that kind of stuff just goes there. So all right, let's head up to the bathroom. Come on. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Welcome to my bathroom. I love this tiny little space, although tiny. It has a, a nice huge shower, actually a little tub in the bottom. I mean, I can get in there and take a bath if I really want to. Um, I love the skylight in there. 
all the sun coming down on you, it keeps you from getting too cold. And we all know that, you know, you don't have much warm water in these little tanks and RVs. There's obviously a toilet. My favorite part is the vanity. Isn't this gorgeous? The sink, the bright lighting. We have LED lights everywhere. Everything's just so bright in here. Um, so that's the bathroom. Take a look at my bedroom though. It's just such a cozy little spot right up here in the front of the RV. I love the fact that we were able to fit a full-size queen mattress in here. I mean, I have all the room to sprawl out. And you guys, do you see the storage space? I have like a full-size cabinet here and this closet, let me see if I can get over here. This closet, look how deep that is. Like a girl's gotta keep all her clothes. I was able to in this RV. It's pretty amazing to get in here at night and just get cozy, have my little twinkle lights and just relax. And my absolute favorite feature of this bedroom is this barn door. Isn't it amazing? You guys, so that's my RV. So I heard you have some questions. So we're gonna head down to the living room and get those answered for you. What made you decide to live full time in an RV? Well, unfortunately I lost my husband to cancer um, two and a half years ago. Up until then I'd never considered living a nomadic lifestyle. I did travel a lot and camp a lot. After I lost him, I really lost the feeling of home. I moved from Michigan to Utah to Washington and never really found a place that I felt like I could put my roots down and I wanted to come home to every night. Then when my daughter went to leave to go to college, I couldn't talk her into staying in the West to go to college. She had to come to Tennessee. And so then I knew that the traveling life in some way was gonna be what worked best for me. So I could work on the road and I could travel and I didn't have to go back to a home that I was paying a mortgage on. How do you fund your full-time RV lifestyle? So I work remotely as a social media manager and I also do marketing for some small businesses. And I sold my house. I sold everything I own to be able to live this lifestyle as well. A lot of my female viewers are concerned about safety. How have you dealt with the safety issue as a full-time solo female traveler? You know, I haven't had really any issues. I've had a couple like creepy times, but I found you just follow your gut. If something doesn't feel right, go with it and get out of that situation or get away from those people. But I've honestly had a great experience. Everyone's been super nice and super helpful. You, you wouldn't believe like all the people that try to just help you out and want to talk to you. It's been, it's been great. What kind of campgrounds do you stay at? Well, I've only been on the road three months. So part of that time so far has been spent mooch docking at my sister's or other family members' houses. My nephew, thank you, Chris. And um, some KOAs and a state park campgrounds. If you could change one thing about your RV, what would that be? It would have solar. And that's something that I'm hoping to install soon. After the renovation this year, I just wasn't ready to dive into another project just yet. But solar is next on my list because I want to be able to go to all these awesome places like Kevin goes. What size are your freshwater, gray water, and black water tanks in your rig? That's something that I love about this rig. Um, my, I have about 70 gallons of fresh water, so that lasts quite a while. I have almost 70 gallons of gray water storage as well, and about 40 gallons of black water. So I can be on the road for, I can live in this rig for a couple weeks fine without having empty any tanks, so that's really awesome. If you could give one piece of advice to someone that's considering this lifestyle, but it's a little apprehensive, what piece of advice would you give? It's gonna sound so corny, but just follow what you feel like is gonna make you happy. Don't let anyone talk you out of it or talk you down from it. You can really achieve anything you want. I knew nothing about RVing, about camping, about driving a big truck, about hauling anything before I bought this RV. And I was just determined that this is what I wanted to do and this is how I wanted to live. And when you have that passion, you can, learn and you can make it work. So don't let anything hold you back. Just follow your gut and get out there. All right, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel, for letting us in your home and opening up to us and sharing your story. It was really great. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed Rachel's RV, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of content. Thanks for watching.
Filling out my cup, coffee talk on the screen porch So in love, now you're the one I'm losing sleep for And I hope the wrong one slip right through your magic fingers And I hope we find some way to fall in love like